Faraday's law of induction says the induced EMF is negative n times delta phi b over delta t. By the way, I want to mention that although this equation is known as Faraday's law of induction, it was not written in this form by Faraday. Faraday was not trained in mathematics, so his milestone physics and chemistry publications contain not a single equation. According to this equation, to produce an induced EMF, we have to have change in the magnetic flux. Since the magnetic flux is B dot A, which equals to B times A times cosine the angle between B and A, to change magnetic flux, we can change the magnetic field B by, for example, pushing a magnet into or pulling it out of a wire loop. We can change the loop area A by doing this. Or we can push the wire loop into or out of a magnetic field. We can change the angle by rotating a wire loop in a magnetic field. Or we can do a combination of the three. If we can change the magnetic flux, we can produce an induced EMF. This negative sign can be explained by the Lenz's law. Lenz's law says that an induced EMF in a closed conducting loop always gives rise to a current whose magnetic field opposes the original change in magnetic flux. This means the induced EMF opposes the change in magnetic flux as if trying to keep the magnetic flux the same as before. Lenz's law is consistent with the conservation of energy. Let's take another look at this demonstration. When induced current flows in the coil, the coil would heat up because of ohmic heating. The coil has a resistance and the power P equals to I squared R, so it takes energy to run a current in the coil. There is no battery in this circuit to provide this energy. Where do you think the coil gets energy to run the current? The energy comes from me, the person who pulls the magnet out. When I pull the magnet out, I must do positive work, give the coil energy to run the current. This means I must be encountering a resistant force. So I have to pull hard with a force to the right. My force is in the same direction as the displacement, so my work is positive. If I push the magnet into the coil, to produce an induced current, I again have to do positive work. I must encounter a resistant force to the right, so I have to push hard to the left in order to overcome this resistant force. My force goes to the left, while the displacement also goes to the left. My force and the displacement are in the same direction, so the work I do is positive. I provide energy to run the induced current in the coil, so energy is conserved. According to the Lenz's law, whenever we change the magnetic flux through a conducting loop, we would encounter a resistant force, because the induced current always opposes the change in flux. Let's look at these two hollow tubes. One is made of clear plastic, the other one is aluminum. And I have these two small cylinders. I'm going to drop them through the tubes. And they came right out. And I'm going to drop them again, except for this time I'm going to switch the cylinders around. Watch what happens. Can you explain what happened? What's special about the two cylinders? This cylinder has a magnet in it, see? And it is strong enough to pick up a one kilogram weight. And it falls through the clear plastic fine. But when it falls through this aluminum tube, it took much longer to come out. Of course, magnets are not attracted to the aluminum. So why did it take much longer? It is because the aluminum is a conductor. We can look at this tube as rings and rings of conducting loops. 
when the magnet enters the ring, the magnetic flux in the ring is increasing. This in turn produces an induced current in the ring. So the falling magnet experiences a resistant force pushing on the magnet upward. When the magnet falls out of the ring, the magnetic flux in the ring is decreasing. This decreasing flux produces an induced current in the ring in the opposite direction. So the falling magnet again experiences a resistant force trying to pull the magnet back up. So as the magnet falls through the aluminum tube, the magnet induces current one way and then the other way, one way and then the other way, one way and then the other way throughout the entire fall. All that time, the magnet experiences an upward resistant force. That's why it took so long to come out of the other end. The magnet loses MGY in the fall, but it does not gain as much kinetic energy as it would in a free fall because it has to spend energy to run the induced current in the aluminum tube. We can use Lenz's law to help us find the direction of an induced current. Here are the steps to follow. First, we have to decide if the magnetic flux through a conducting loop is changing or not. If there is no changing flux, there is no induced EMF, no induced current. If the flux changes, we have to find out whether the flux is increasing or decreasing. If the flux is increasing, then the original magnetic field and the induced current's magnetic field must be in opposite directions. So the induced current's magnetic field can try to cancel the increase in flux. If the flux is decreasing, then the original magnetic field and the induced current's magnetic field must be in the same direction. So the induced current's magnetic field can try to compensate for the loss in flux. For example, here I have a wire loop and we are inserting this magnet into the wire loop. This V is the velocity of the magnet going down. Let's find the direction of the induced current in this wire loop. First, we look at whether and how the flux changes. Because we're pushing this magnet into the loop, we're making the magnetic field in this loop stronger. This means uh, the flux is uh, increasing. That means uh, the original magnetic field and the induced current's magnetic field, they must be in the opposite directions. So we need to find the original magnetic field's direction first. The original magnetic field is produced by this magnet, and the field lines produced by the magnet goes uh, into the south out of the north, and this line continues up that way. So the original magnetic field goes upward. This means the induced current's magnetic field must go down, opposite to that. Now we have to use this right-hand rule. With our thumb, follow the current and the curve the four fingers for the direction of the magnetic field. Now inside the wire loop, we need the magnetic field produced by the induced current to go down, which means inside the wire loop, I need the curve, the four fingers, to go down. That means that in the front, the current has to flow to the left. So the induced current in this wire loop must go to the left in the front and the, to the right in the back of the loop, so that the field produced by this current will go down inside the wire loop, matching this.